Hey everybody, it's meteorologist Brad Panovich and it's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. But we got to address something that happens every winter. Not that we've had a lot of this this winter because it's been so warm and wet, but it's the snow rumor mill, which is starting to crank up in earnest. And hey, I do think, and I will tell you that the pattern is still favorable for maybe one more event between now and mid-March. I've been preaching this all winter, even though I think we're going to bust on my above average snowfall forecast. We get one storm, we could we could definitely go above it. But I still think there's a chance for winter weather, and you never write it off till the middle of March. But I live by these rules for a reason, because as much as I love snow, I love getting the forecast right more. So when we're talking about winter weather in the southeast, seven to ten days out, that's a time range where you can never be specific about what's going to fall, where it's going to fall, how it's going to fall. But you start looking at pattern recognition, which is, are, is the is the pattern favorable? Is there cold air somewhere in the vicinity? And is there a storm somewhere in the vicinity or a possible storm? So right now, we're in that 7 to 10 day time frame for late next week into next weekend. And yes, there is some signs of a favorable pattern, but it's kind of wishy-washy. But it's probably the best pattern we've seen since, gosh, you got to go back to maybe December or January. Uh, five to seven days out, trends up or down. That's when we start saying, hey, is it looking likely or less likely? We're almost into that time range. <clears throat> and then three to five days out is where you start talking about, hey, what type? Is it going to be an ice storm, snowstorm, mix, whatever? And then you don't give totals out at all because it's just too hard to do until one to three days out. I live by this for a very good reason. This gets the forecast right, still keeps people informed, but doesn't overhype events and doesn't undersell events. I will caution you, long-range forecast. Everybody loves looking at these long-range forecasts. I've been keeping track since November, okay? Out of the, um, since November, out of the Euro and the GFS seven-day plus uh, range snowfall maps, at least since I've been keeping track at work, we've had 18 times where it's forecast measurable snow for Charlotte. That if, if I told the lows up, that would have been 85 inches of snow. Now, did I ever forecast 85 inches? No. Did we ever forecast any accumulated snow? No. How much snow do we get? A trace. I just point that out because long range, we should have had a ton of snow right now. Just like in hurricane season, if I look at long range forecasts, we should have 10 Cat 5 hurricanes hitting the Carolinas um, during hurricane season. Long range forecasts, they're not very accurate. They, their pattern recognition is the important part. So what's happened in the last 24 hours and the reason I'm even talking about this is um, we had a lot of people kind of freak out about some potential winter weather next week. They posted one deterministic model run at about a 10-day time frame. Now, I should caution you, if you ever see that, please ignore it. You can ask me, but just ignore it. If you know it's at that time range, ignore it. Here's what's going on next week. The Euro model, which was posted, uh, I won't reshare it because it's already three runs old and it's completely gone and bogus already. Um, but late next week... There's a front that comes through, pretty strong Arctic front, and we've got a pretty decent area of high pressure. You can see it here, uh, a 1045 high would be pumping cold air down. Now something could brew down here. We could see a stalled front, and we're likely going to have some kind of overrunning event. Now, the question in this whole thing is the strength, intensity, location. You know, where's this high? Does the low form here? Does it form here? Is this front south? Is it further north? Those are small nuance changes in the forecast that have a, a huge impact on what we're going to see. And I'm just going to show you the sounding there, but I'll turn that off. Um, and the reason I don't get too caught up in this stuff too long range is because the thing about this forecast next week is if something's showing snow, but it's 10 days out, the difference in snow and rain is a tenth of a degree sometimes. We don't have the ability to forecast something 10 days out within a tenth of a degree. That's literally like trying to get a hole in one on a 600 yard par five hole. It's not possible. You gotta keep it in the fairway. So trying to be super precise means you're actually gonna be less accurate. And remember, precision and accuracy aren't the same thing. Um, being too precise actually can make you less accurate um, in the long range, especially when you're trying to nail a forecast. So yeah, this is a pattern right now. If I look at this, even though it shows nothing over us, this is a pattern I would definitely keep an eye on. Now. The models are going to flip-flop back and forth with their solutions, but that's common in this time range. You don't latch on to one thing. So the reason I say this is people oftentimes don't look at the ensemble data. And if I look at the Euro ensembles, people don't realize that these models are run 51 different versions. They basically run a simulation of the atmosphere. 
So this is the European model for Charlotte. And you can see a couple outliers. There's one there that shows a whole bunch of snow, like seven inches, and another one up here that shows seven inches. And then there's a couple other ones that are showing lesser amounts. Now what happens, what gets posted on social media is this single run, basically. And everyone ignores the 90% other ones that show zero. So right now, based on this, you can see the average snowfall from the European ensembles next week is literally quarter of an inch, 0.25, okay? So 0.25, so let's look at the GFS. It's a little more bullish. It has a couple more that shows some snow, and actually it's more on board this morning than the Euro. It shows almost an inch of snow in Charlotte, but that's only about half the ensembles. Let's look at the Canadian model. It shows less. It only has one real run that has any accumulating snow next week. And it's a doozy. It looks like five inches there. But there's uh, four other ones that are showing some kind of dusting, uh, less than measurable, which is less than a tenth of an inch. So if I were to combine 51 runs there, 21 runs there, and 21 runs there, that's 93 model runs. Out of those 93 model runs, only 21 out of 93 show some measurable snow in Charlotte. That's about 22%. So from a probability standpoint, that's especially at seven to 10 days, that's pretty low. So when you look at a, a, a model, I always like looking at the WPC outlook because I really think this is the correct way to handle this. Next Thursday to Friday, it shows a 10 to 30% chance of measurable snow in the mountains and possibly in the coastal plain. 10 to 30%, that's that 22%. I just spouted off to you, 22%. Okay, so somebody posted a map showing, you know, seven, eight, ten inches at 10 days. That's just not likely um, because of small changes multiplied by long time frames equals big changes in the forecast. Uh, when I go out to schools, I often tell kids, I say, the hardest part about forecasting long range is that small changes multiplied by seven or 10 days make big differences. So, so for instance, if I think a cold front's coming in tomorrow and it slows down by five miles per hour, that doesn't really change the time of arrival that much tomorrow. Um, it might slow it down by an hour or two hours, depending on the time frame. But if that same front I know is going to be here seven or 10 days from now, and it slows down five miles per hour, well, a five mile per hour drop times 150, 60, 70 hours, all of a sudden means that front is now a day, day and a half, sometimes two days slower in arrival. So you got to remember those things in long range forecasting that small changes have big impacts. So saying that we're going to get this amount of snow in a specific spot, especially in the Southeast where we know the difference in rain and snow is literally the temperature at 10, five or 6,000 feet being 32.1 or 32.0, um, you have some big, big issues. So next week, the moral of this whole thing is the good news is the pattern right now is looking up for late next week. Um, but there's not a lot of consistency in this pattern. I do think there is a some something to watch late next week. But other than that, don't buy into the hype. And remember who shares these. It's not mostly trained meteorologists. Sure, a couple try to do it for clickbait likes and shares. But in general, professional meteorologists understand the goal is to get the forecast right, not to be first, it's to be accurate. So that's what we're looking at on this Valentine's Day. Snow lovers, there's still hope. I've been trying to keep your, your spirits up like me um, until I get past the middle of March, basically past St. Patrick's Day. Um, I still think we've got a decent chance of getting a good snowstorm here in the Southeast.